G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for uh, a video today discussing the West Coast Eagles in particular. Um, yes, I'm a Nuffy Eagles fan who likes to make videos about the Eagles, but to some extent, uh, I do get hit up for my views on West Coast. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a demand from you for me to talk in depth about where I think the Eagles are at. And as such, I'm going to do a video. It's going to be serving a bit of a season preview. Obviously, the Eagles are coming off their worst ever season uh, with two wins and 20 losses, somehow avoiding the wooden spoon. There's a genuine sense that the Eagles are about to plummet into a hole for five years, potentially longer due to their list composition. Um, and, you know, of course, the fact that their season was beyond pathetic uh, from a results point of view. So in this video, I'll be talking a little bit about why I don't actually expect that to be the case, at least not immediately. Uh, but there's some nuance to it. I don't think the future projection from the Eagles will happen quite like uh, most people are expecting it to. Before I get into all of the reasons why I think that's the case, I'll uh, just remind you guys that we are proudly sponsored by Manscaped.com here at True Footy Enterprises. We're in the peak of summer now. It's a great time of the year to really be uh, focusing in on your fitness. You really should be doing it all year round. But on top of that as well, you know, we, there's more opportunities to go to the beach. Your rig's out a lot more often. And I know for me personally, my Manscaped, routine has had to lift to match that need. <laughs> Every now and then I let the chest hair grow out a little bit more than uh, than what is attractive and as such I need a really good tool for the job to uh, make sure the job gets done quickly and easily and the lawnmower 4.0 is the shaver that you can get from manscaped.com it's literally just about a 10 minute job the battery goes for 90 minutes obviously it's waterproof so you can do it in the shower and uh, it's extremely easy you know if you've left it for a long time I know that one thing that used to be a bit of a mental barrier for me is when I would let my body hair sort of grow quite long uh, I think, fuck, it's going to be such an ordeal trying to get this job done. But nah, with the Lawnmower 4.0, it's a very, very quick job. And you can get other accessories as well, like, you know, ball wipes. We are in peak summer. It's about 38 degrees. Um, so, you know, if you're on a night out and uh, you're sweating stank, you can do these little tricks as well. There's like ball deodorants and et cetera as well, where they have a great variety of products. Long story short, you can get 20% off on all of those products if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout on manscaped.com. Let's get back to the video. So as, uh, as we all know, last year got as bad as it can possibly get from a West Coast point of view. There were criticisms of um, you know the fitness levels and, and fatness as well. I had to check that wasn't a typo for fitness. It was fitness and fatness uh, were made particularly by Kane Corns. But I think to really get into this video, we need to look back at this point last year and uh, get a clear picture of, of how it all went wrong last year. January, from a preseason point of view, things were going relatively well at West Coast. You had a handful of senior players coming back from injury. That's just standard. A lot of players were looking fit and healthy. Apart from that, McGovern slimmed down massively. Uh, obviously, he's been, always been a sort of thick sort of fella, but you know, you can see the lines in his face suddenly for the first time. Apparently, switched to low carb beer. Apparently, which I think is hilarious. Didn't didn't stop drinking. Just switched to low carb beer. Then, of course, you know, Jack Darling is stood down from the Eagles or steps away from the club. I know there's some some drama going on with that at the moment, but nonetheless. Uh, it appeared on the surface that he didn't want to get the vaccination and therefore uh, wasn't allowed to play for West Coast. And I did a video on that at the time, but that kind of serves it as the point where it all started going wrong after that. Shui did a calf, a, a pretty serious calf from memory in a match simulation. Jamie Cripps tore a pectoral muscle, which is an incredibly painful injury, I believe. Oscar Allen gets a uh, foot injury and that would end his year before it even really started. And Elliot Yo started backing off from training. He'd previously been suffered, suffering uh, osteitis pubis, which is a debilitating injury. Then on top of all that, we have the week from hell. Tom Cole busts an ankle uh, in preseason training, I believe. Doesn't play a single game that year. Then in the preseason derby, we had Sheed bust his ankle, Chesser bust his ankle. And then in the same game, Elliot Yo, who did play, uh, did a pretty bad calf. Ironically, Tom Joyce gets signed as a top-up player because of all these injuries. We're allowed to sign a supplemental player in the same week he busts his ankle. I shit you not. Tom Cole obviously didn't play a game all year. Chester didn't play a game all year. Didn't get to debut from that injury. Sheed would play one game and get injured again, and Yo would just play five games. So you can see the mountain of injuries starting to pile up at this point of the year. 
And this is before COVID has even impacted West Coast, right? So around that time, the isolation rules, I think were different in Perth. And if you were close contact, you had to isolate for a week. And this just ripped through the squad. There was a combination of uh, actual cases and isolations. The squad shrunk again in round one. We lost to the Gold Coast Suns by five goals. And by round two, with all those COVID isolations as well, we literally could not field an AFL side. We were the only club from memory that were unable to field a side in the AFL team and had to use waffle top-ups. And this happened twice in round two, and I think around round seven against Brisbane too. Obviously, the COVID uh, situation would ease slightly, but it never really improved. By about round six, we started rushing back senior players way before they were ready, and they played terribly. The this, this team literally got worse when those underdone players came back, and it really never really improved. On top of that, Nick Natanui, one of our most important players, uh, would miss three months with an injury he sustained in round four. Rioli misses two months. Uh, he was playing good footy up until that point. Point, misses two for months in the middle of the year. Um, McGovern, who's in, you know, all Australia, maybe not all Australian, but um, close to form for the first part of the year, probably best and fairest form, uh, gets his ribs crushed, I think, in round 14, fails to play a game after that. So you can see that the adversity that was going on at West Coast um, meant that it, it's almost impossible to really assess whether or not we'd improved on what was a very poor finish to 2021. Now, none of this is an argument for the fact that the Eagles are a dark horse or they're going to shock people this year, but I would argue you can't make a real assessment of where West Coast were at in 2022, nor do I think you can really blame anyone for the poor fitness levels when you consider all of those events. That being said, like I said, things were not rosy going into 2022. Obviously, we finished ninth in 21 after being a very strong team in the first half of the year. We were one of the literally one of the worst form sides in the competition by the end of that season. And I think the game plan was showing evidence of being stale. The players didn't look confident. Um, they weren't playing anywhere near their full potential. I can think of so many players that stagnated. And as a side, we just looked pretty meek. So whatever meaningful strides we took in the preseason last year to correct this from a game plan point of view and, you know, the style and the new coaches, we, we couldn't really assess what progress they had made because the season was completely ruined in the opening rounds. So with all of that context established, let's have a look at this year. And I'm going to make the argument for why uh, this year will be better than people expect for the West Coast Eagles. So the first obvious point to make on the back of all that is that we have a whole heap of players that in theory, touch wood, will be available this year that weren't available last year. Alan and Sheed uh, for a start and Yo, those are three absolute best 22 players, probably you know, Allen and Yo could be best 10 players this year, I would argue. They missed all or most of last year. And uh, and even Tom Cole, who didn't play a game, I think he's important structurally, kind of an underrated player from a West Coast point of view. Nat Nui McGovern also missed like half the season each. So all those players coming back is a reason why this year should go better. On top of that, I think 22 saw um, an opportunity for some some depth players or some prospects to to gain some much needed experience. We had, you know, Bailey Williams and Callum Jamison. It's, it's arguably the weakest rock duo in an AFL sustained side I've ever seen. Um, and it's not really their fault. They're not quite ready. However, they did get some good exposure last year. And I think we saw some genuine progress. And Jermaine Jones also found a niche down back and I think grew as a player. And then we got some exposure into some young guys like Brady Hoff, I'm a big fan of. Rhett Bazo played nine games. Cully got a taste from the mid-season draft. Um, and Harry Edwards played 17 games as well. And while he probably hasn't shown real signs yet, I think there's a bit to work with there. And, and so therefore, the depth of that, you know, best 28 group of players is stronger in theory than it was 12 months ago. Fitness is also vastly improved this year. Not only that, it's being said that this is the fittest West Coast group we've seen since 2018. Now, let me put a huge caveat on that. Obviously, there's so many puff pieces in the media these days, and everyone's looking at their own preseason and their match sims, and they're thinking, God, this guy's going to be a gun this year, and most of the time, it's bullshit. However, there's some very clear evidence why this preseason is going very, very well compared to previous ones. First of all, the comparative lack of injuries. Touch wood, it is a relatively clean bill of health. It's a pretty standard injury list uh, where players are just sort of working back from some injuries. But for the most part, the key players, uh, the ones we really want there round one, are all fit and firing at the moment. 
Second of all, uh, the players are physically slimmer. You can actually see quite a physical difference in particular in the, se uh, the senior players. As such, there's probably been more of a focus on running and, and endurance and probably sacrificed a little bit of the, um, you know, obviously the bulk side of things from a contested point of view. And the third piece of evidence that the, uh, that the players are fitter is that this is undoubtedly going to have been a massive focus and it's something they're talking about publicly as well, the Eagles, that the fitness side of things is a huge focus this year to get right. So those three things make me very, very comfortable that we're quite fit right now compared to previous years and certainly compared to last year. And lastly, I think we will de genuinely see a change in the game plan. I think uh, it's been alluded to that many times and there's a lot of evidence from, you know, match sims and training from, you know, external reporters who are saying that the game style that the Eagles are playing is completely different, playing a very aggressive through the corridor style, which is something, you know, we've been crying out for for years. Obviously, we recruited Jaden Hunt, which on, on face value kind of seemed like a weird recruit, to be honest, for a 28-year-old. When you add him to the side, guys like Jones playing potentially back, he might play forward. Hoff playing back when he was drafted as a midfielder forward and then guys like Yo and Cole return there's enough leg speed in there to suggest that the Eagles will genuinely change the way they play this year and therefore they have to improve because the, the baseline is pretty low. So those are all arguments that I've laid out for why this year will go a lot better than last year and why last year might be a bit of a bit misrepresentative of where exactly we're at. And to be fair, I don't think anything that I've outlined so far has been controversial. None of what I'm saying is is relied on a, a huge degree of faith. I'm not saying, you know, this player will break out and be an A grader. All of that is fairly logical, conservative arguments. Availability and fitness have gone from terrible to quite good. Some tactical changes are clearly in progress. It may not translate to wins early, but I think it's still progress nonetheless. As such, I think we're unlikely to fall into the same traps that plagued us over the last couple of years. I do think there's also this, uh, this abstract variable here where I think ego is going to play a large role in West Coast this year. From what I can gather, there's a huge determination to to not repeat the shame of last year. We're a proud club, then, and it's, it's an aging playing list as well. And guys like, you know, Shuey and Yo and, and, and to a lesser extent, Kelly and McGovern and Nat Nui, all these guys, their legacy is a little bit at stake here. If they peter off into being, you know, a, a pathetic side for the next couple of years and they all retire, that will genuinely impact the legacy of the 2018 side. Even if a premiership is not possible for this group, there will be a huge desire to protect that legacy. And I think from a mindset point of view, which shouldn't be underrated, the Eagles will genuinely give it a good crack this year. However, none of this means that the Eagles are not on a steep uphill climb to become relevant again. I'm well aware of the list composition and, uh, and certainly things are going to get tough. What I'm forecasting this year and beyond is that this might prove to be a bit of a dead cat bounce in 2023. And what's a dead cat bounce? Well, it's uh, it's quite literally, you know, you picture a dead cat, the cat's already dead, but when it hits the ground, it bounces. So it, things appear to be okay until ultimately you realize that the cat is in fact dead. In other words, I think West Coast are going to have a vastly improved season and probably best case scenario, like obviously I'm an optimistic Eagles fan, I think we could nudge the finals race without actually really being a serious finalist uh, contender, right? but I think we'll make it difficult. I think we'll, we'll be continue to be tough to beat in Perth again and beat some teams if they're having an off day, but ultimately n never really reach the heights of the sides generally competing for finals. And I think that will be a, a pretty stacked part of the ladder this year, some really good sides competing for that finals. So best case scenario, we, we're a competitive outfit this year. We're tough to beat. Uh, ultimately miss out on finals but obviously the list composition is still an issue there's a lot of veterans yes we've drafted well um, but I think what's coming is the fact that you know veterans even if they return to their form will start to bow out slowly over the coming seasons at the end of 23 Hearn and Shuey probably the most likely to go Cripps is also out of contract so you've got three um, retirements that are more likely than unlikely. The following season, the players out of contract are Nat Nui, who will be like 34, I think, uh, Gaff, Yo, and McGovern. Some of those might play on, but, you know, depending on how we're going in as a list, they may all retire as well. Where the issue lies for West Coast as well, it's not the top. The veterans are sound. Uh, I think that we've drafted really well, but what you've also got is a lot of plays in that middle, mid-age gap that are coming out of contract that are still yet to be proven at AFL level. Some names for you are, uh, you know, Connor West, Greg Clark, Petrovsky Seaton, Xavier O'Neill, Luke Foley, Luke Edwards, Jake Waterman, Petrocelli, Rotham, and B. Williams. You can see that I've done my research on this issue. And out of that group, you know, a couple might prove to be handy AFL players. 
but the next generation that are meant to step up into that veteran void once those guys go off is massively concerning. It's very unproven. And my point, I guess, is that we're really only just beginning this transition period. We are almost falsely pushed into the rebuild right before it was about to come. You know, there's some talented youth now for the first time in a while we can get excited about. Ruben Jinby, Elijah Hewitt last year, um, Jai Cully from the mid-season draft, Campbell Chester the first round of uh, the season before that. And I've talked about Hoff and Basel on this channel. Uh, I'm excited about those kids. I think they all genuinely are going to be good AFL players, obviously. Law of statistics means that, you know, a third of those will be rubbish. But even looking at it optimistically, all of those guys are good then it's going to take them a number of years for them to hit their straps and genuinely replace the output that the veterans are having. So long story short, the Eagles are going to be better than you expect this year. They're going to be tough to beat at times. There's probably going to be some frustrating moments. We might jump out of the box, but we need to be patient with this rebuild. And I think that another cliff is coming in 2024 and beyond. And I don't think things will ever get as bad as 2022. At least I, I hope so. I just think there was too much going on there. Nonetheless, it's going to be a really, really long road to the top. And personally, I'm, I'm kind of embracing the rebuild and I'm excited to see this next group of Eagles sort of establish themselves at AFL level and, uh, you know, build to be the next Premiership Eagles squad. Um, but yeah, it's a long way off, it seems. I said this in another video, but I don't know what, what's a realistic... Um, uh, what's the ideal season for West Coast this year? Is it nudging up and getting close to finals or even finishing eighth and have the veterans do most of the heavy lifting? Or do we want to see some genuine exposure to guys like Jinby, Hoff and all those guys I named where those guys show growth so that in 2024 we're better side for it. But in that hypothetical scenario, we've won less games. That's probably my preference at this point, but I do want to see a competitive side. For the first time in a while, like I said, We've got some youth to be excited about, and uh, I think I, I'm back in the club to realize that we need to give them games now, and I'm excited, to be honest. We just need to be patient. But anyway, guys, that is my forecast for the Eagles in 2023 and beyond. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, whether you're an Eagles fan or not. You know What do you think from an outside perspective and from an internal perspective? We're always going to be a bit more optimistic as Eagles fans, uh, but it would be cool to see maybe some outsiders um, consider the things that I've said in this video and tell me why I'm wrong, or um, perhaps you've learned something a little bit about what's been going on over the last um, couple of years at West Coast. So either way, I look forward to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.